hey guys and welcome back to my channel if you are here for the first time then you are most welcome and don't forget to subscribe if you haven't subscribed yet this week's video is a case update or what we know so far type of video and i just wanted to bring you guys up to date on what we know so far on this case as the trial is starting on the 22nd of january so that you can be up to date with the case if you're going to be following the trial because it's going to be a very big trial it's going to be on the news a lot Tehofato Poli was a 28-year-old makeup artist from Midoland Soweto. She was 8 months pregnant at the time. Her family and friends described her as a loving and humble person who was looking forward to giving birth. Tehofato's parents had passed away years earlier so the family was looking forward to the new addition to the family. She made everyone feel good. Very loud. Very energetic. I think if you know her then you'll definitely agree with me. Tsehofato's boyfriend and father of a child was JC analyst Ndutugo Shoba. Ndutugo was involved in a love triangle between himself, Tsehofato and his fiancé. Ndutugo hid the relationship and the baby from his family and his fiancé. Tsehofato's family had tried numerous times to get into contact with Ndutugo so that he can come and do things the right way like pay damages but he would just ignore them and the family ended up telling Tehofato to leave him alone and that they would raise the child themselves. To consult the so-called Baba, he played duck and dive for the next four Sundays. On Thursday the 4th of June 2020, Tehofato left her home in Midland Soweto to visit her boyfriend in Florida, Johannesburg. She told her family that her and Dutugo were going shopping for baby clothes. Later on that day, one of Tehofato's relatives, I'm not sure if it was a call or a message, but they received some sort of communication from Tehofato and Tehofato was saying that she had gotten into a fight with Ndutugo and Ndutugo had called for an Uber to send her home. But Tehofato never came back home that day and her last scene on WhatsApp had was 10 p.m. that night. Tehofato Bole was then reported missing and only after when she was reported missing did Ndutugo admit that he had a relationship with Tehofato. He told his family that he had a brief affair with Tehofato some time ago and she had fallen pregnant and they were preparing to buy clothes for the baby. And I found this very interesting article where the media asked Ndutugo whether him and Tehofato were dating and he said that she was not necessarily necessarily his girlfriend. On the 5th of June 2020, a day after Tehofato was reported missing, a body was found hanging by a tree with stab wounds on the chest. The body was of a barefoot woman wearing only a blood-stained sleeveless top and turquoise leggings. Twine had been tightened around her neck and her body had been hung from a tree. The area where the body was found is between a hostel and an informal settlement. And on the 8th of June 2020, the body was positively identified as Tehofato Bole. The area where her body was found was 7 kilometers away from when Dutugo lived. A couple of days later, passerbys or community members, should I say here in Rudabut, discovered her body hanging from a tree and it's believed that she was also stabbed. Uh, in her chest uh, when she was found hanging from that tree. During the time that Tehofato went missing and her body being found, there were a lot of alleged human trafficking cases and a lot of girls were going missing around that time. And when her body was found, it sparked international outrage regarding gender-based violence and the safety of women and children. And it put a lot of pressure on the South African police. And what I've noticed from covering these cases and researching these cases is that when police have a lot of eyes on them and if they have a lot of pressure from the media and the public they solve these cases and they solve these cases in a timely manner these cases don't drag for a long time so then this led to police finding cctv footage in Dutugo's complex and the cctv footage allegedly showed Tehofato on the 4th of june getting into a great jeep outside in Dutugo's house and Dutugo did not get into the car with her 
This then led police to arresting 31-year-old Muzigayese Malepane. Muzigayese apparently confessed to the police and according to him, he had planned and executed the murder of Tehofato with the person known to her. He told police that he was promised 70,000 rand by this person. Muzigayese also told police that he had previously attempted to murder Tehofato but he had failed. For their first attempt, Muzigayese and this other person arranged for an interview for Tehofato in Mondir, Johannesburg, where if she had turned up, she had been kidnapped and killed, but she never did. So on the 4th of June, the day Tehofato went missing, Muzigayese and this other suspect arranged for an Uber ride for her to pick her up and take her to another place. Muzigayese claims that he was driving the Uber and this other person was sitting in the back with Tehofato. This other person then started an argument with Tehofato and that's when this other person took out a sharp object and, say, and stabbed Tsehofato several times. They then proceeded to Durban Deep Road the boat where Tsehofato's body was then found and they hanged her with a rope and left her helpless. Mazegayese has been charged with premeditated murder. So that's what we know so far with regards to the case and hopefully the prosecutors and the police have a very strong case and obviously there's so many unanswered questions and the biggest one being who is the second person who hired Muzigaise and it's like the most important question because it's the cause the why as to why Tsehofato was murdered and her unborn child was murdered and you know there hasn't been any arrest there's been no second arrest by the time I'm making this video and hopefully it will come out in trial and hopefully Muzigayese will tell us who hired him and it's so sad to think that Tehofato was killed just for 70,000 rand her and her unborn child was killed for 70,000 rand and another thing is that um, in South African law a baby isn't considered a person until they are born so they won't be charged with the murder of the unborn child because it's not considered a person it's still a fetus and so I hope the second person doesn't get away with it because it's really not fair and there was actually a rumor on Facebook and Twitter people were saying that um, Tutugo's fiance had been arrested in connection of the murder but it wasn't true it was just a rumor no second suspect has been arrested and it kind of makes sense to me as to why people would think that the fiance might be the second person or even Dutugo wine Dutugo could be the second person but people are just you know throwing around names and I even saw that one of Tsehofato's uh, friends one of the first people who had reported her missing had actually been receiving death threats and people just sending her very nasty messages saying that um, she should just uh, tell us who what happened to Tsehofato and she actually went into witness protection so people are just um throwing around names and another interesting thing that i found whilst researching this case is that um Zerufato's uncle who has been the spokesperson for the family actually was the attorney that represented uh, Sandile Motswe in the Karabo um, Mukwene case and ever since the murder of Tsehofato he said that he's no longer going to be representing murderers and rapists so i thought that was interesting so that's the end of this week's case if you did enjoy the case please do subscribe and like the channel and please do let me know your thoughts down below and thank you very much